with another exciting episode of the Phenomenal Lady Show. Good evening. I hope you've had a great Sunday already. Let's make it even better. This week on the PL Show, we are talking to a famous filmmaker from East Africa. We'll meet her in a moment. But remember, the PL Show is brought to you by Roma Insecticide Spray and Coil in Tuntu Master. Theco Spray Starch Look Sharp. My name is Kemeni Amano and I'll be right back. Should you rumor to me? I told you, Master, I bet you're too much now. You're so mad at me. Roma insecticide spray, Ada Roma. Enter free, enter tia, make it cheha. No way. You make no. I told you, back up, crown and fan him. I'm not so a impulsive. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito coil. I'm out there with a shot. Roma, get quiet. Roma and Tonto Master. Wow, my uniform looks different. Feco spray starch, maximum point. Rache, pause. When you want to bring a moon to the moon, I feel you in your spray starch, Papa. On your particles be on water, no wrinkles, smooth iron. Yes, Papa. Papa. Feco spray starch. Me here perfume. Also, guy. Feco spray starch. Look sharp. Look sharp. Look sharp. back this is the PL show we are filming here at the Labadi Beach Hotel and in a moment we should meet our lovely guest from East Africa she is from Kenya but lives and work in Uganda let's take a look at her profile from short film production to the big screens of Disney a music video for number one spice one of the soundtracks for the Miranese movie the Queen of Katwe Phoebe Kiora is adept at what she does. At present, she is a programs director for Maisha Film Lab, founded by Mira Nair. Our phenomenal lady for today is Phoebe Kiora. Welcome back. Uh, you've seen Phoebe. Let's meet her now. Huh? Phoebe, thank you very much for coming all the way. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. How, yeah. how far is East Africa from here? <laughs> well, it's five hours by flight. Five hours by flight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the you, kilometers. You, oh, you, have, you have done wonderfully yeah. by coming this way. Yeah. But why in Ghana? What's, what, what brought you here? Um, I work with Maisha Film Lab, as you've seen on my profile. and. Um, Part of the things that we're trying to do for Africa cinema is to connect links between uh, our students mm -hmm. and on the continent and to see how we can get more film being made on the continent and collaborations okay. within the continent amongst ourselves. And uh, because of that, we have a film school network that has uh, 10 African film schools uh, a part of. And um, one of the schools is NAFTI here in Ghana. And we started a collaboration with the uh, school and Berlin Film School last year in November uh, mm -hmm. with the aim of building capacity for web series training okay. because everybody is now going watching stuff on their phones right. so that we can equip them with the tools that they need how, to tell the going? stories. Well it went well, it did go well, mm -hmm. we shot uh, the series, now we look forward to post-production which is another part of training that's going to happen for the 15 students that we've okay. had for the thing. Yeah. And you're here with us too. Yes and I'm here <laughs> with you too, thank you for having me. Absolutely, <laughs> what, what does Maisha mean? Uh, Maisha means life in okay. Swahili. Uh, it's the name of our film school and as an organization, or rather our founder uh, loved this name and wanted to name her daughter Maisha, but when she got a son she thought the name shouldn't go to waste and so uh -huh. when she founded Maisha Film Lab she named it uh, as such. Uh, well, yeah. in, in, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how long has the Maisha Film School um, Hmm. existed uh, hmm. w what has been its its work so far hmm. in hmm. terms of the people it has yeah. reached yeah so 2004 uh, school was founded we had our first lab and uh, to now is 14 years coming this August actually uh, we turned 14 years and we've had uh, primarily we were training filmmakers visionary filmmakers in Kenya Uganda Tanzania and Rwanda now we've opened up uh, to mm -hmm. Africa but in those 14 years we've trained over a thousand uh, filmmakers have walked mm -hmm. through our doors and we've made over 70 short films uh, which are made by the students as a result of the training of being with us and we run boot camps for cinema we're not a full-fledged uh, degree course film school we issue certificates so when you come to us it's, it's sort of like to get a taste of what's mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. what's cinema Hannah's and then, the talent the yes, raw talent yes just 
give people inspiration to, to be able to make their own films and that's, tell their own stories. That, that's great. Now, let's talk mm. about you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> how did film start for you? Uh, quite accidental, actually. <laughs> I had been in Ghana in 2011, rather actually not Ghana. I keep mm -hmm. saying I'm a child of the soil. <laughs> I've lived and worked in several African countries. So I was working with this advertising company uh, based in South Africa where I was before I came to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And the next uh, transfer happened to be in Uganda. And so I moved to Uganda with Alliance Media. And while I was there, uh, my predecessor at Maisha uh, wanted to leave. And when they were looking for someone, we obviously had conversations and I just knew my dream job had landed on my laps. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was in advertising and I was enjoying it. I was enjoying traveling around Africa and living in all these different countries. But there was something missing. I, I didn't feel like I was fulfilling mm -hmm. what I'm meant to be doing. So when I heard about the, someone pointed the opportunity to me and pointed my issue at my direction as well, I knew that was it. I'd found my retirement plan, as it were. But, but, but you yeah. didn't study film or advertising? I didn't study film, didn't study advertising, but with film specifically, I've, I've always considered myself a consumer of the arts. I've gone to theatre since I was a kid, enjoy poetry, traditional dances, watching film. So it was a good segue into filmmaking, mm -hmm. coming in as a consumer of the arts, mm -hmm. now to be on the admin side of the business of making film. But you yeah. studied political science in school? Yes, I studied in Punjab University in India and I did a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Political Science, Public Administration and Economics. Right. But the nature of life in Africa, as you well know, <laughs> there are no jobs, so you take what comes your mm -hmm. way. So, so you never so made use of that? I didn't. My first job was in insurance and then advertising and now I'm in film. That's basically the last two decades. Of your life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Now, um, I want us to uh, mm. talk about one of your mm. works. Mm -hmm. You did uh, some work on mm -hmm. the Disney film Queen of Cutaway. Uh, but not really. Our school was back support. But my right. boss is the director of the film, Mira Naya, who founded Maisha, uh -huh. is the one who was commissioned by Disney mm -hmm. to make Queen of how, Cutaway. How, how, did, how did Maisha launch that gig? <laughs> Well, I mean, we have friends all over the world being an international film school and our founder Mira is a very international independent filmmaker who's really living her life in Uganda, in the US and in India. And uh, because of being in the US, she knows people and uh, at the time when uh, I was joining Maisha, there was a Disney executive who's Ugandan, Tendon Agenda. Mm -hmm. He's now since moved to Netflix, but he was, in, uh, he was a vice president at Disney and he really wanted this story told. And since he knew Mira, one of his trips home, they were both in Uganda and they had a conversation about what can they do? There's a book already, can we make a film that's really mm -hmm. truly Ugandan? And Mira Naya has lived for the last two and a half decades, married in Uganda, has a child, you know, so she was the best suited director to, to make the film. And so that's how that uh, came, about. came about. And so what we did as Maisha was uh, extend an opportunity to our alumni to get a professional paid job and so got them interviews with the heads of departments in the various departments that Disney uh, was running. And of course, they were picked on merit. So we had over 40 Maisha alumni uh, working for, for work, working on the film. And really, I also gave my staff time off to be mm -hmm. hired on the crew of Disney. So literally, we, we supported, we were really the support. We were not the production company. We were mm -hmm. just a support for, for any of their needs while they were in Uganda. Right. Was it, was it a difficult experience? Because really good film i've seen it yeah uh, what, what was the experience like giving support or, or yeah. you know offering support services yeah. for yeah. Uh, the crew uh well of course once they got hired they were you know nothing to do with me it's all a disney well, show so i was watching disney uh -huh. do their thing uh -huh. in uganda you must so have it was been proud of yourself amazing. when you saw the film yes and actually no what was even more interesting was just to see what a professional international standard film set mm -hmm. runs like and what are the you know what is everybody doing on the set they're all these things that we don't necessarily teach in our school and people end up having to teach themselves once they're done with us so the most interesting and amazing thing was that just to see the running of an international film set and secondly for our alumni since then I can hardly get them to do me a free gig because now they are too busy mm -hmm. they got so many jobs out of that, that we have a lot more people trusting that local crews in Uganda can handle uh, productions and we get people calling us all the time for recommendations of crew and we you know so it's part of capacity building as well for me that was the most important 
uh, mm. thing to come out of it. In, indeed, mm. uh, we'll, we'll come back uh, mm. to you, yeah. Yeah, the, the story of the woman, Phoebe. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> let, let's talk about the film industry. Yeah. Um, mm. I, it's hard for me to say we have an industry on the mm. continent. We have mm -hmm. individual you know, mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. having uh, mm. in, industries. But yeah. generally, what would you say about film mm. on the African continent? We're living in very exciting times. This is when it's actually literally at the cusp of, you know, just blowing up. Different parts of Africa have had different experiences in film, depending on what their influences were. In West Africa, a Francophone, West Africa has always had access to French money, so they are that, you know, they're a step they ahead because films? no, they've had access to French uh, money from the French-speaking uh -huh. European countries, and so they've gone that further ahead you know they've been doing it longer there's been more training right. and more uh, what's the word more uh, incubation of filmmakers coming from francophone West Africa particularly and South Africa we know the story of South Africa there's also got film schools there's a heavy you know investment in the industry and then the rest of us are all everyone is living in their own bubble but trying to you know get right. film to move forward but it's still a time that there's, we're making a lot more films now. Mm -hmm. We're training a lot more filmmakers. So it's definitely happy days for the film industry in Africa. We have a lot to figure out. We don't have our own language of right. film. We're mm -hmm. still adopting Western methods of filmmaking and some of the things don't work for us. But at the same time, as we try to discover ourselves, we're using the already existing tools to tell our own stories. I, I'm sure I'm sure there are many other challenges mm. when it comes to film mm. or, on the continent but let's let's deal with the language part. Mm. What would it take mm. to or should we even think about dealing with that language problem in the first place and what mm. would it take? It just takes visionary directors to find their language you know and once they've found that things that work for us that are from the continent for the continent then it becomes something that others may choose to adopt or not because it's very you know we're all again africa is not a country as you know mm -hmm. so we all have so many different layers and different ways of doing different things so it's it, it might not end up being a universal voice but a voice in a language that can truly be african mm. yeah. what are some of the other challenges mm. that you know having a um I'm tempted to use the word unified uh, mm -hmm. film industry on mm -hmm. the continent yeah. is faced with mm -hmm. uh, beyond the language problem. I know you've, mm. talked, you've talked a bit mm. about finance, mm. but w what else could be the, or are the other ch mm. challenges? Yeah, so um, obviously as a growing industry, one of what I think is part of our major challenge, a conversation that needs to be had on the continent is distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're making all these films. Are the filmmakers making money out of it? How do we make the business? How do we, how do we understand? How do we learn the business of mm. film? You know, the business side to film. What does that look like? How do we distribute our films? What are the best channels? How do we train? You know, how do we train our students to think about the end before they make them think mm -hmm. about where you're gonna sell it, mm -hmm. who's your audience and what would money look like if mm -hmm. you were to make money from it, your it, film. Is, is that a conversation that has begun? It's happening, yes, it, it does, it definitely is happening and what we have, what we need to find are perhaps more homegrown solutions where we're able to sell mm -hmm. to our audiences. The films that do the best out of the continent mm -hmm. are consumed outside of the continent mm -hmm. and yes the filmmakers will make money but those films then sometimes don't end up coming back because they take a life of their own mm -hmm. uh, given the templates that mm -hmm. are there for when a film is going to an international festival circuit and unless you're flying a so barrel of kojo on a flight to yeah. europe yeah. when does it come to my screen right. these are the conversations i'm saying you need to have how mm -hmm. do we make it possible for filmmakers to actually make a living out of their films mm -hmm. without having to go so far. Right, so, so would you say then that at the moment the industry is not as lucrative on the continent as it could be? It's not as lucrative as it could be, yes, and it's because we do not understand our audience. Um, if I can say, I can be as bold as to mm -hmm. say that because if we understood our audience and we would know how to sell, to make product that then we're able to bring back and sell back to them. So we need to understand what's available, what are the channels that uh, mm -hmm. we should be you know, engaging with, with our audiences, with the products that we're making. So f um, when you say that mm. the industry is yet to understand its audience, mm. 
I would want to know more. I mean, what's there to understand? What should we know or what should mm. industry players know yeah. about the audience it mm. intends to sell to it's, or reach? It's really to tell stories and resonate with them. Mm -hmm. Why is Nollywood so popular? Why are Mexican soaps so popular? I guess it's because people see themselves in these stories. And like the conversation is so, it's, it's a larger conversation with audience, with broadcasters, with distributors. It's a lot of people because you find, I think, you have to pay for space on TV to, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, have air, your, to air your program. <laughs> How many people right. are going to be able to afford that? Right. And also to make products, uh, just back to audience for a second, just to make product that allows them to trust us and to trust that we are an industry, to mm -hmm. trust that mm -hmm. we have, we are thinking about them as we are making these mm -hmm. films, not to just slapstick and hope it's African, it's ours, our people will love it, you right. know, just to take our craft more seriously as right. well in terms of what we produce, the stories we tell and how we tell these stories. I, I guess that, that will also feed into mm -hmm. quality. That's what I'm talking about, production mm. values. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's about telling the story the best way you can with the resources you have, but it should be acceptable. You know, it should be, it should mm. have some standards, mm. you know. So, yeah. so then, uh, how, how would we explain what appears to be the influx, particularly mm. of telenovelas um, here in the West? I don't know about East Africa. Do you mm. have a lot of telenovelas or your, yes. or your TVs? Yes, they've, they've been there since I was a kid. The Mexicans <laughs> have yes. been on our screen. Yes, 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 yes. That's, and now here the that's Indians have turned kind of the colonization. Play. Exactly. Yes, they have. I'm seeing now we're watching Indian films dubbed in local language. Right, right. You know, but I think also it still comes down to things like understanding distribution and access and capital and money to make the films. Because obviously, so, 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 right, I, so, I don't know how they mm -hmm. are... Because of what course, they've been watched for that? decades. They've been watched for decades. So it's, it's easy to pass them mm -hmm. on. But you're here. You've got your new product. You, you know, you need that product to reach its audience for it to be consumed. You need to make the next film. So you need to get money from this one so you can go on to the next one. You need to pay your bills. So, I mean, I've seen I've seen a few yeah. collaborations, particularly yeah. Nigeria, East Africa, South Africa. Yeah. But how extensive are those collaborations? Because some of those films are mm -hmm. really good. No, it's not as big as it should be. Mm -hmm. That's why we're also excited to be part of and open, you know, opening up to working with other countries in Africa because the, the sky is the limit. That we haven't even scratched the surface really when it comes to working together on the continent. Mm. And of course, if they are like great producers, great distributors, it doesn't matter what country they come from. People will find each other and they will work together. Mm. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen. Um, mm. A few films, the mm. storylines, mm -hmm. uh, not from East Africa, but I mean yeah. generally on the continent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we tend to write a lot about love, and you do know. Do we? I haven't seen enough about love. Ah, uh, you haven't. No, <laughs> I disagree. What, what do you usually see? <laughs> it's drama. I, I don't know. It's it's. How do you say? <laughs> okay, I've seen. I've seen some. It's periodical. What we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, and especially just my time at Maisha because we receive a lot of applications for students wanting to join our programs what we tend to see is that without people talking to each other there are similar issues that are plaguing a society at any given point in mm -hmm. time like right now we're going through a phase of receiving a lot of period piece applications it means we are starting to get ready to engage with our history mm -hmm. you know a couple of years ago it was fgm everything was about female genital mm -hmm. mutilation every application everybody wanted to tell that story so it, it usually goes it, it's so i don't even understand how it happens mm -hmm. but when we look overall in one year the applications we got we can always tell the thing that is disturbing people uh -huh. in that, uh -huh. you know, in that particular period in time, which is, I guess, why film exists and is good to, to, you know, be the host of the memory of the society and the issues that we're dealing with at any given point in time. Right. So, yeah. so that uh, perhaps that that would be the um, slight difference in the film. I mean, outside mm. of documentaries, mm. the feature films that would see mm -hmm. uh, from East Africa and then West Africa, particularly the largest market in West Africa, Nigeria. Yeah. Now, uh, in the Nigerian case and in the Ghanaian case as well yeah. we see a lot of marriage we see a lot of love yeah. I don't know have you does it come across also in East Africa that, that, because yeah. what I want us to talk about mm. is how sometimes the storylines uh, tend to mm. perpetuate some mm. things that we want to mm. um, stop in society mm -hmm. for instance mm. 
Um, film, film would would portray severe gender bias and mm. get away with it. Mm. Um, so you see, you have films where the girls are always they are not working. They are always chasing that man for the money, mm -hmm. or you get that mm -hmm. that man, girl who is always begging for the love of that man mm -hmm. in order to be, you mm -hmm. know, to be accepted yeah. or married. Mm -hmm. uh, and film always always gets that gets away with that. Do you do you have such in East Africa? I, I don't think it's that film gets away with it. These are filmmakers who are making the films they want to make. There is room and space for all kinds of stories. So maybe at some given point in time, there's a story you will keep seeing every mm -hmm. day. But what happens is that. Other di as directors make films, they end up tackling uh, different, different, issues. different issues. So again, it's a question of style and issue and mm -hmm. what do they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, in a way, you can't like, decide mm -hmm. this is the only stories we want to mm -hmm. see. Sometimes, how many World War II, World War One movies are there? They're still being made mm -hmm. to today, yeah, yeah. you know? And we want to sit there and say, okay, guys, we, we understand <laughs> there was, you know? But you cannot stop stories from being mm. told. So we're just begin, not beginning really, we're just, actually, I think what it is is that there's more access. Because there's always been cinema, mm -hmm. even in Africa, but the mm -hmm. access wasn't as mm. easy two three right. decades ago as right. now so Absolutely. what we have is more access mm -hmm. and it also i guess depends on where are you looking for the content for you mm -hmm. to be seeing a lot of love stories mm -hmm. it means that's something that's of interest to you and that's why somehow maybe subconsciously everything you're looking for or you find is, it is love with that is with love Perhaps, Perhaps that could Perhaps. be it. Yeah. When we come back, we'll talk yeah. about your one year stay in Ghana. Okay. You're watching the PL show. My mm -hmm. guest is Phoebe Kiera. She is a filmmaker. We'll be right back with more. Stay with us. Should you rumor to me? I told you, Master. I bet you are not one. You say, Oh, my Roma insecticide spray, Ada Roma. Enter Fred, enter Tia, make a chair. No way! You make no, and don't turn back or crown of animal. And also, I am poor with you. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito quail. And I would dare we a sham. Roma, don't cry! Roma, and don't turn master. My uniform looks different. Feco spray starch. Majimo point. Rache, pause. When you water and brand amount of the moon, I feel you in your spray starch, Papa. On your particles be our water and no wrinkles. Smooth iron. Yes, I'm Papa. Feco spray starch. Me here perfume. Also, your guy. Feco spray starch. Look sharp. Look sharp. Look sharp. Oh! Oh! Welcome back to the PL Show. We're filming here at the Labadi Beach Hotel. My name is Kemini Amano. If you just joined us, I'll let you meet uh, our guest in a moment. But just a quick reminder, Roma Mosquito Coil. It is smokeless coil. It kills and repels mosquitoes effectively. Leaves your room fresh all night long. You deserve the best. Go for Roma Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil anytime. Insist on Roma in Tonto Master. My costume is by Lifestyle uh, Hamatan. Uh, Immaculata made this for me. But let's meet our filmmaker again, particularly for those who are just joining us. Phoebe, mm -hmm. um, you stayed a whole year in Ghana. Yes, I did. All of 2011. Yes. You, you were working with the advertising agency at airport at the time. No, an outdoor advertising company. An out, outdoor advertising, advertising company. company. Yeah. Now, tell us about your stay in Ghana. Did you like it? I loved it. I didn't want to leave. You didn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> I really had a good, great stay in mm. Ghana. Uh, the advertising business here it was thriving. I'm sure it's still thriving at mm -hmm. this point, until now. And um, I love the beach. Mm. So how, I, how, did, how, did you, really, how did you land the yeah. Ghana gig? 
I mean, coming to yeah. moving to Ghana, yeah. you know. Yeah, I uh, worked with the, the same outdoor advertising company, outdoor and airport advertising company. I'd been with them for seven years. So I was in the South Africa office and there was an oh. opening in Ghana and I was always known as a wandering child. If there's an opening in any country in Africa, you first ask Phoebe. <laughs> if she's not interested, <laughs> then we advertise. I think, so. was, it, was it so easy for you to pack your bags and come to Ghana? Yes. Uh, very easy. Mm. I've, I, I've lived a lot on the continent and I have enjoyed, I, I, it's very easy for me to pick up and go, mm. but the things that keep me grounded, uh, they, they, like I, it's hard to make people understand that the rolling pin I used to make my chapati mm -hmm. is the one I bought when I was 17 in India. So there are things I carry with me that help me settle, like if I have my rolling pin, my kitchen, my little kitchen things, there's things that I, if I have those, I don't care where you throw me, I'm at home. Mm -hmm. So I've really been at home on the continent wherever I've stayed and Ghana was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Let, let's throw you way back. Mm -hmm. what, what was it like growing up? You're yeah. Kenyan, now you live in Uganda. What, yeah. was it, what was it like growing back in Kenya? Growing up in Kenya, great, child of middle class, government, working parents, <laughs> uh, three siblings, lived in a very great estate with great connections. We grew up like a big family in the estate where I lived. Uh, went to a mixed school for primary school and a mixed school for high school, and then India for university and normal childhood, I would say. And everything has led from that, you that. can never tell where you're going to be. I was going to ask be. you, was there anything in your childhood that yeah. you could say informs your yeah. um, love for film? You know, is there, is there anything you could connect? Well, yes, a lot of film. We did watch a lot of film. My dad loves film, so we did mm -hmm. actually, I consider myself a consumer of the arts, not mm -hmm. just a lover of film, mm -hmm. because it's theatre, it's poetry, it's dance. I also dance salsa, so I am really like generally the act in the art in one way or the other I engage but more as a consumer mm. and of course I'd watch lots of movies we grew up in an era of the drive-in cinema I don't know if you had that you have that in Ghana mm. but we went to drive-in cinema that was like the treat the special treat you waited you knew you're going like as soon as the next movie comes out you know you're going to be taken to the drive-in cinema and there's going to be fried chicken they put the thing uh, hang mm -hmm. it in the car and you're all in the car with your family watching a film in the night outside on this big screen so that obviously was very exciting for me as a child. It, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it sounds like you had a really good yeah, childhood. Yeah. I did. In, interesting yeah, childhood. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, um, uh, I, I want us to talk about uh, the post-election violence that rocked your mm -hmm. country at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Were you in Kenya then? I was living in South Africa. You were living in South Africa. Yeah. So as a Kenyan watching from South Africa, yeah. what was going on in your country? How yeah. did you feel? Um, I just knew we couldn't sustain it long. We do not like the sight of blood. So <laughs> what was going to at some point. And in fact, I was also in South Africa at a time where there was xenophobia going on. Absolutely. So it's sort of like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. So whether I'm in Kenya or South Africa, uh -huh. there's always going to be something that the nation is, is dealing with. But of course, that was really tragic. What happened in Kenya, we still have people living in, um, in camps who haven't been able to go back to their homes and obviously politics informs this so mm. yeah we just hope right let's, let's come back to the film industry mm. um again what we realize with the industry mm -hmm. is you know when women are in the industry mm -hmm. they tend to be put in front of the camera more mm -hmm. than behind the camera and do a lot of the um decision making mm -hmm. uh, stuff that yeah. go I into film um but but you have defied that uh whether you like it or not you have done that <laughs> i've defied every box they've put me in <laughs> uh, absolutely and so um yeah. how did you do that uh well like i said this job was really like a recommendation but i've always been in leadership positions mm. wherever i've been because mm. i get things done and because i want to see i want to live I want my life to reflect, mm. you know, like onto the next person. So even being at Maisha, even being here, you know, every girl I meet who wants to be an actress, I'm always constantly telling them you could be more powerful mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. the screen, mm -hmm. not necessarily in front of the screen. And of course, you find that I actually find that it's access to information, access to opportunity, 
uh, mentorship that doesn't normally happen in the African society as it truly does happen mm -hmm. but there's not targeted this person is mentoring you mm -hmm. for your career mm -hmm. so in as much as it's been accidental I've been a grab and go mm -hmm. kind of person and so in my line of work also I talk a lot to young women to think beyond this little thing you think you could do you could do 10 times what you're thinking about right now right. so it's just about helping them just dream bigger Indeed. for themselves did, did, yeah. you, did you encounter any gender related challenges you know people thinking well mm -hmm. you're a woman let mm -hmm. the men do it or yeah. people you know shrugging you sh mm -hmm. shrugging at you yeah. because you know you're a woman it's happened at every job but sooner or later it dissipates because the work speaks for itself but obviously as women we're constantly having to prove ourselves that's not going to change today but we just have to keep forging forward and doing what we're doing and then the work speaks mm. instead of you speaking about how i am a woman mm. and how i'm going to do it right. just get it done get and it then done. that speaks volumes in itself right so you, yeah. you've done the last two decades from um insurance yes to to <laughs> advertising <laughs> then uh film now yeah. um where do you see yourself in another decade uh i really really like have fallen in love with the world of film world of cinema and I really, really, really just want to produce. We have so many stories to tell on the continent that have not been told. And whether it's at Maisha, outside Maisha, I think I found my retirement plan six years ago when I joined <laughs> Maisha. So I'm on retirement. Basically, I'm enjoying my job so mm -hmm, much. It's mm -hmm. not a job. So I still see myself in the film, in the film industry. side of things and producing films, I it's guess. Sometimes yeah. it's difficult to ask people mm -hmm. who enjoy what you're doing mm -hmm. what do you do when you're not working ah. and, and so and, and particularly for you because yeah. it's um, um it's in the arts it's even yeah. more difficult to yeah. ask you that but i'll ask you anyway yeah. when you're w not working yeah. with uh directors and yeah. producers yeah. and yeah. actors yeah. what do you do where would we find you i travel a lot mm -hmm. you find me like i travel a lot ex excessively I, I i've got a travel bag that i think there's not a cure for and i don't want the cure found mm -hmm. because i love discovery that's what nourishes me that's what nourishes my soul even this trip in ghana i've still learned new things and yet i was here I lived here for one year i've been here back and forth two other times before this time so for me travel is like food so travel i enjoy dancing i'm a salsa dancer and a couple of other structured dancing but i really do enjoy just dancing being with family cooking i love being in the kitchen to cook for people mm -hmm. not for myself it's mm -hmm. not fun when i'm cooking we for should, me we should, we should do a cooking <laughs> contest right now <laughs> not contest I'm, I'm i cook for fun for mm -hmm. you to have a yummy well, experience what do you, what around do you like food. to cook i'm heavily influenced by indian cuisine because i lived in india mm -hmm. for seven years mm -hmm. And so a lot of my food is curries. Curries, I love chapati, paranta, like anything around anything Indian in cuisine. Indian. They're the only people who can turn me vegetarian. I also oh. love cooking vegetarian Indian. So that the Indian cooking really heavily influences my uh, kitchen. Next time we're in East Africa, we're definitely knocking definitely. on your door. Definitely. I love to, <laughs> you know, put together a good curry. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. But in India, you mm. went there so young. Yes, I was 17 when I went What to gave you the courage to leave home <laughs> at 17 uh, because of school? I will say it was school and having parents who believed in me and who, that's a strength I'm talking about uh -huh. people empowering mm -hmm. young ones growing up. Because while everyone else was being afraid around my parents, that are they making the right decision? Mm -hmm. I remember distinctly my dad saying to his brother, she's going to be fine. What was that, was that And time? that already gave me, uh -huh. you know, like if he thinks my dad says I'm going to be fine, then I you will, will be, be fine. fine. And I was Was, fine. was that <laughs> time when you were in India and you wanted to just pack up and come home? Not really. I traveled the country extensively. Oh, I love travel. No, I really enjoy the country. It's one country I would live in today if they allowed us to get jobs mm -hmm. there. Why, yeah. why? What did you love about it? <laughs> Everything, the food, the culture, the people, the places. Like I said, I traveled there extensively. It's just so, it's so different. It's mm -hmm. so different, but it's so, it's, it's beautiful. Right. I, I just, yeah. What would you say to mm -hmm. young filmmakers, people who mm -hmm. aspire to mm -hmm. be uh, mm -hmm. like you? What mm -hmm. would you want to see in the film industry yeah. another decade to come when you, yeah. you have an extended retirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let people know you don't know everything, but every day you learn. I'm still learning. I've been with Maisha for six years. 
as a program director, so I'm every single day I feel like I'm in a class. With the Fresh Craft series we just shot here, I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Just to being open to that and to understand that it never ends. As long as you're living, eating, breathing, it does not end. Mm. And you've got to want it. Mm. If you don't want it, it won't come to you. You've got to want it, you've got to look for it. You've just got to nurture that thing. The thing that your heart is telling you, this is what I want the rest of my life to be about. You've got to fight for it. Well, what Nobody can fight for it mm. for you but yourself. What about young yeah. girls who want to go into film? It's a very exciting place. We need more women in film definitely we really really need we need lots of producers we need lots of assistant directors we need lots of female directors you know there is so much the film industry in africa right now is still a blank canvas there's bits and spaces that are occupied but there is so much room to have so many more women come on board mm. yeah. right now um we've got some things for you Huh? We know that you you don't have these in, in yeah. Uganda or yeah. Kenya. Yes. And so from our sponsors we want to uh -huh. we want to say thank you Whoa. for making time off your busy schedule. Oh my goodness, should I start for oh, this? Oh yes, we should. We should. And, you for the and, and you're welcome thank to you. Ghana. You're thank welcome you to so Ghana much. again. Yeah, again. And yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me help you with that. I'll put yeah, that here thanks. for you. It's good to well, see you. Well, goodbye mosquitoes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you, do you have a lot of them in East Africa? Is yeah, yeah a bit we cooler? do. We do, but uh, in Uganda, the mosquito is, the, in Kampala particularly, it's not carrying the malaria. Oh, how yeah. wonderful. But, but does it carry is, any other thing? No. Oh, but it also bite you. Oh, recently so, I had yeah, somebody, yeah. another scientist contesting, uh, mm. the, the scientist who determined that is the female uh, mm -hmm. mosquito that spreads the parasite yeah. and i'm saying these people yeah. these scientists <laughs> you made us believe that for too long eh well yeah. you're watching the pl show yeah. we'll be right back with more phoebe thank you very much mm -hmm. for, for for agreeing to be here yeah. fantastic conversation on film thank you when would you cast me when can you come to South Africa? Oh, <laughs> you're with the right I, people. I can, I can, I can, I can just, you know, uh, Sisi would give me leave, yeah, yeah. and then I would come to East yeah. Africa as long as I'm getting a role. You would, get, would it yeah. pay well? I don't it know would. about that. That's a conversation <laughs> we are having, isn't it? <laughs> yes. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Should you rumor to me? I don't know, Master. But yet you are not. You're so mad at me. Roma insecticide spray at that Roma. Enter friend, enter tia, make a cheha. No way! You make no, and don't turn back or cry on fan. I'm not so a poo see. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito cream. I'm out there with a shell. Roma, I'm quiet! Roma, and turn to master. Wow! My uniform looks different! Feko spray starch! Majimo point! Rache, pause! When you want to run around the moon, I feel you in your spray starch, Papa. On Japa to Kuzbe or water, no wrinkles, smooth iron. You shall, Papa. Feko spray starch. Me here perfume. As a guy. Feko spray starch. Look sharp! Look sharp! Look sharp! Oh! Oh! Welcome back to the PL show. I'm grateful you're still here uh, with us on the program. We've just talked to the lovely filmmaker Phoebe Kioria. If you missed it, you know that you can always catch a playback on our, our channels on social media. The show is brought to you by Roma Mosquito Spray and Coil in Tuntum Master. Feco Spray Starch looks sharp. I look wonderful thanks to Lifestyle Hamatan. We're filming here at the Labadi Beach Hotel. Speaking of which, they've been around for so long and just as great 
as they, they, they were or from the very beginning, if not uh, even better. So uh, here with me is David Eduafo. He's head of sales and marketing here and he was gracious enough to give us this place to film. Thank you very much, first of all. Thank you too. And um, it's an honor to have you here. Oh, yes. And uh, to have your, your program here. Right, right, right. Now, let's talk about the Labadi Beach Hotel. It's been around for a long time, yeah. but the quality hasn't dropped. It's only got better. Um, and we see it from the people who continue to patronize the Labadi yeah. Beach Hotel. What makes this place unique? Labadi Beach Hotel, as you rightly said, I've been around for a while. 28 years is quite a long time mm -hmm. in, in, in the organization's life. Even in human life? In human life. And um, we keep evolving. It's a hospitality industry, so we have to always be innovative. Uh, it's very dynamic. We don't keep the old lady still. We keep on polishing the old lady, trying to make sure that the old lady is still strong at mm -hmm. all times. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and, and I realize also at the gatehouse, um, well, the new gatehouse came with uh, improved security. Of course, right. of course. And we the only hotel with a scanner mm -hmm. on the floor. So as your car passes through, it's already scanned because we are very conscious of security. Mm -hmm. We don't joke with our security. No compromise at all with security because that's a key in our business. We host international people, celebrities, as you can see all around here. And of course, presidents also come here. So we are very mindful of our security. Right, so um, the food has been consistent and expansive, really, the last yep. 28 years. Yep. Right. Trust Chef Gary, he's full of innovation and he is very consistent with his food quality. Mm -hmm. Because as I said earlier, Labadi is the hotel that combines business and leisure. Mm, pleasure. So I say pleasure. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing like having a serious business meeting or having conferencing and then you don't you, you, you don't get a right food to eat you know you feel homesick so mm -hmm. in Labadi you are at home you feel relaxed and the warmth hey you have a good food and then you feel like staying forever mm -hmm. so we have guests who have been with us for years I have a guest who has stayed here for the past 20 years or more mm -hmm. and they still come and because they know they will get the same quality if not even better. Mm. The staff here, amazing. Mm -hmm. They are our asset. Mm -hmm. You go to the kitchen, people have worked for 15 years, 20 years, so they are very uh, consistent with whatever they do. Labadi Beach Hotel is an indigenous hotel. Mm -hmm. First five-star hotel in Ghana and for Ghanaians. Nice. Don't forget this hotel is a 100% Ghanaian entity. Indeed. And it's for us, not Indeed. for any Ubruni somewhere. It's Indeed. for Ghanaians. Indeed. And so I am proud of it and I want Ghanaians to patronize their own. Yes. So I have a special deal. You call the hotel, we will give you what we offer Ghanaians. Yes. Right, right. Yes. What's the deal? What's the deal you're giving? It's a very cool $199 for Ghanaians. Mm. And you need to supply for, for, your, for an your, entire weekend. For weekend uh, per night for a weekend. But okay. there are terms and conditions, Ten, which okay. once you call in, you will be given the terms and conditions. Right. And it's strictly for Ghanaians. Right. And now let's talk about pricing. Mm. Quality stuff, they say you don't come cheap. Uh, so so people will be worried, well, all these good stuff will cost a lot of money. Quality goes with uh, mm -hmm. cost. We're not expensive. Mm -hmm. We are very, uh, would I say, competitive, mm -hmm. not expensive. Expensive is a word that I don't want to use right. because it's neither here nor there. I agree. But we're competitive and we, we give you the quality that you deserve. <laughs> I hear. Yes, but I want us to talk about conferencing and events that you hold here. The Omanyo Conference Room, I would say, was built to cater for every need. So talk about weddings, talk about uh, international conference. Talk about parties. The Omanye conference room caters for every need. You know, normally you go to some conference facilities and then when you want to um, uh, do this lighting system, mm -hmm. you struggle to get stands. Labadi will have all those trusses there that you can hook your lights, lighting system to it. No sweat. Mm -hmm. It makes life easier for the event organizers. That is what Omanye is all about. David, thank you very much. You understand why he is uh, the head of sales and marketing here at the Labadi Beach Hotel. You're watching the PL show. Uh, let's talk about this trending uh, art of using the pencil to draw people. It's not what your kids do at home. 
Take a look at hashtag trending with Ellie Karis. Many contemporary artists are mastering the art of pencil drawing, which is in vogue, but not everyone is skilled at it. For Era, it is easy to mistake her works for photographs. We talk to her about the pencil portrait business and more. My name is Ellie Karis, and this is Hashtag Trending. Mrs. Erajua Alote, thanks for having me in your beautiful home. You're welcome. How have you been? Very fine, thank you. How are you too? I'm good. When did you discover the love for art? Do you do it as a hobby or it is a full-time job? It's a full-time job. I mean, it's a hobby turned full-time job, so I do it full-time. Now to business. For eight years, how fulfilling has it been? Just drawing, I mean, making pencil lines come to reality to make it look like a real thing is very, very fulfilling. Seeing my, my clients and people get excited when they get the artwork and all that makes me very, very excited. Meeting people, like prominent people, like let's say Bishop Adunasari, I've met Lydia Fawson, I met Kufuo, I mean, I've met a lot of prominent people and then getting recommendations outside the country and all that yeah. The person I like to draw that I haven't drawn already is very, very alive. I mean she's Oprah. I mean everybody knows Oprah. I like to draw her because she's really done a lot for women. She's really empowered women and then listening to her story from where she was and how far she's come, I, I really admire her. So I would like to draw Oprah. Take us through the process of creating a, a pencil portrait. You basically need a, what's it called, a paper, a cardboard actually, or any surface you desire. People use canvas and all that, but I use the cardboard. You need your pencils, you need your charcoal, so you basically get those things. You do the outline, as I do first, I do my outlines, and then I start adding the shades. I start from the lighter tones, then I get to the darker shades, then I add a little highlight and things, and then I'm good to go. And then I spray my finishing fixative on it, I frame it and then that's it, I'm good to go. And how long does it take to create this magic? Two hours, two uninterrupted hours, but then if I have other things doing, I have to pause, go and get them done and then come back. But then if I'm just seated and then completing the work, two hours maximum, I'm done. Do you use your work to talk about current social or political issues? Yes, I do, I do, I do. I did one for the Kufu Foundation we were trying to acknowledge Kufu and the work that he's done. So I did one, I mean, I did one work that portrayed the, what's it called, lack of water that was there before he came. And then when he came, he brought water. So there's this little guy who has had gotten an ab abundance of water. So he was just happy and then reminiscing about the time that he used to work miles to get, and get water. And then he was, while he was enjoying the moment of getting abundance of water. I guess you heard about a Nigerian pencil artist, Ellie, who caught the attention of Hollywood actor and comedian Kevin Hart on social media, aside as platform. How do you seek opportunities or market? Recommendations from people. That's, that, that also helps me a lot because I get artworks done for people and I get calls, oh, this person recommended you to me, this person. So aside social media, from recommendations from other people helps me broadcast or I uh, almost called as bit my works, yeah. As a young woman who is self-employed, what are some of the major struggles? Struggles are, I, I don't think I, I really have any struggles as a now, as, as an I was an entrepreneur, I don't have any struggles as a now. But then I, ha I think there are, there are positive sides to being self-employed because I get time for myself, I get time for my family as a now, and then I have my assurance of monthly income. In fact, I'll say daily income because I get paid daily. So I think those are the positive sides of being employed, but for the struggles, I, I don't think I face any struggles for now, by God's grace, yeah. Are there any current art trends you are following? I recently came across a colored pencil art. Is that of any interest to you? 
I basically use pencil and charcoal for my artworks and then there are other mediums people use and that's the charcoal people use pastel people use water people use at sand if people use sand for artworks they are nice I might say I see that they do I follow them as an artist I have interest in them but then for me personally what I use the medium I use is the charcoal and then the pencil basically what is your vision in this field I'd really like to build an art institution where I can I can focus on the females because in this industry the females are very limited so I like to get an industry an art school where I would train a lot of females I mean to be able to uh, reach their potential in this art so that's my goal yeah. boss lady high five for that thank, thank, thank you. you so much for spending time with me thank you too for having me too but i have something small for you Anna. oh yes i have something for you mm. oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes for having me this, this is, is me small. this is actually me guys this is small for you i mean to show my application <laughs> so much beautifully framed like Mona Lisa I think I should just add Lisa to my name and the car is Lisa Ellie Lisa which one my producer would decide <laughs> this means a lot thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome thank Beautiful. you so there you have it if you are looking for that perfect gift for that special someone a gift that will last longer and importantly make their day an unforgettable one get a pencil portrait by the experts thanks for watching today's hashtag trending my name is ellie Harris. lovely ad work out there aren't they thank you very much ellie Harris, for always bringing us the best in hashtag trending the PL show has come to an end and hour comes too quickly here on the show. But we are brought to you by Roma Mosquito Spray and, and Coil in Tonto Master Feco Spray Starch. Uh, look sharp. We are very sure they will bring us back again next week. A big thank you to you. A big thank you to Labadi Beach Hotel for allowing us film here on their lawns. And a big thank you to Lifestyle Hamatan for my lovely shirt dress. You can always find a playback of the show on the social media handles. But we'll see you same time next week with an equally impactful episode. My name is Kemini Amanok. Good night.